doing? Good. Hey, as an offensive player, how do you view um, like a game like Sunday night where you guys win the game, you're playing complimentary football, but you're only scoring nine points, don't get the ball in the end zone? Like, do you view that as, as a success? Are you frustrated by it? Like, how, how do you kind of do that? Uh, the main goal, obviously, is to win the game. So from that point of view, it's it's a success. Um, you know, we kind of had an idea of how that game was going to go, what type of a game it was going to be, and it was exactly what we thought. Obviously, there's a lot of times, especially in the second half, where we felt like as an offense we were, uh, you know, leaving the defense out to dry. They were out there way too much. Um, you know, that's just really taxing on a defense, and you know they answered the challenge. They did an incredible job against a really good offense. So that was great to see, and it's uh, it's encouraging to know you got you know those guys on your team. Uh, but yeah, um, there's there's a lot of things we could have done better. Um, we felt like we we could have closed out the game with the ball, and we we didn't do that um, like we wanted to. So that was a challenge to us, and something we know we have to improve on in the future. Where, where do you think this offense is these last couple of weeks? Do you feel like maybe from that losing streak, you've taken a step forward just from a consistency standpoint, maybe? Yeah, I think so. Uh, I think we we understand. Um, maybe a little more of our, our identity. We know what we can do, uh, what we can't do in order to succeed. I think we've, um, you know, hit some of those markers in these last two wins, which is really important. So just understanding who we are and, hey, this is, this is how we're going to score points. This is how we're going to move the ball. Um, and each week just taking the kind of things that, hey, we need to, we need to improve on these things if we want to be the offense that, that we know we can be. And so just, um, yeah, coming in, going to work uh, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and making sure we're sharp for the, for the game. Brad Martell. Hey, James. Uh, question about the path that these two teams have taken. Is it, um, just as, as a professional in this league, is it interesting to you in any way or satisfying or gratifying to be involved in a game where you had, you know, your team went through a five-game losing streak. They lost seven in a row. Um, and yet, you know, both teams obviously persevered to the point where you're, you're in a meaningful game on December 20th, 7th on uh, Monday night. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. Um, it's such a long season. You know, it's a, kind of a cliche. It's not a sprint. It's a marathon, and everyone knows that. And your, your identity kind of forms as the season goes along, and, you know, you might play a, a stretch of tough games where, you know, it's one score loss after one score loss, or you're just making some kind of, you know, dumb mistakes that you know um, you can't make, and then you kind of turn it around and figure out, okay, here, guys, this is what we are. This is how we're going to win games, and you just, um, you kind of get that formula, you get it down pat, and you understand how to win games, and that's all that matters at the end of the day. You know, whether you win by one or 40, it's still only one win. And uh, I think a lot of people know that. And toward the end of the year, um, you know, teams kind of filter themselves into, into what type of team they really are based on their record. Luke? James, I'm, I'm just assuming over the last couple of years, you've had an opportunity to go up against Marcus Davenport in practice. So I'm just going to ask this. Um, how difficult is his uh, speed to power? That he has, uh, it seems like that's that's kind of one of his his go-to moves. It's what he's used with a lot of success, especially this year. Definitely, uh, personally, I don't think I can't recall anyone that um, has you know that move that is that polished, that's that effective. And it's honestly, it's great. I told him uh, maybe last week or a couple weeks ago. I'm like, you know, I'm so glad to see that. Uh, working on Sundays because I am more than sick of tired of trying to block that, you know, throughout training camp, throughout practice, and uh, just seeing it pay off for our team is great, for him is great. It's obviously a great move for him, and uh, yeah, it's just it's helping us. He's a disruptive player that's having a lot of success lately, and uh, man, it's uh, it's a tough move, and I do not envy anybody trying to block it. Mike, uh, it's funny. I was going to ask you about facing Camp Jordan. Um, I, I, if I remember right, you did not play against the Saints when you were in Baltimore, right? But That's correct, yeah. We played okay. them, yeah, missed one to injury, and uh, then I was a backup uh, one year and didn't play, yep. I assume you've studied him on tape, though, even as an opponent were part of meetings to prepare to face him. What, what has made him kind of a, a unique player and still does, I guess, 11 years into his career? I think uh, the first thing that jumps off is – um, he's not going to take a playoff. So, you know, if you've got 70 plays in a game, he's going to have 70 opportunities to make an impact play, whether that's a TFL, um, a sack, a turnover. 
he's not going to take any of those plays off, and that's just going to increase his chances to make an impact on the game. The second thing is um, his kind of move set that he does, everything looks the same. You know, whether it's a, um, a pass set um, or, you know, you're run blocking him, he approaches every block in a very uh, similar way. And then right at the last second, you know, whether it's a swim move or whether it's a bull rush, uh, whatever it may be, they all look the same. So you really, a uh, player like him, one, you got to bring it every play, and two, you got to make sure that uh, your technique is, is sharp, is on point, and is consistent because as soon as you have one little slip up, uh, he's able to take advantage and, and make a play. Last question here, Amy Just. Hey, James. Um, so even though you'll play on Monday, you have a almost traditional schedule with Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, off Saturday, then walk through Sunday. How meaningful is that, that y'all will get some family time on Saturday, just knowing how precious that is, especially during the season? Yeah, it's, in, it's incredibly precious. Uh, that's, that's totally right. Christmas is a very important holiday uh, for a lot of people for great reason. And I think, yeah, just to have a little chance to know that, hey, we've still got the exact same amount of time uh, that we would have in a normal week. We've just got, you know, one day in there uh, to catch some physical rest, to get some mental rest and spend time with friends and family. It's, it's a great feeling um, and it's very exciting the way your schedule works out. Uh, playing on holidays, you know, typically isn't the most enjoyable thing to do. So just to know that, hey, we've got Christmas, we've got a Monday night game following that. Um, you know, it's a great holiday, great atmosphere for a game. Uh, in the dome, blackout. It's uh, it's just a great combination for for a lot of great things. I think that's it. Thank you, James. Thanks, guys.